Okay, well, it's been... Oh, shit. Well, it's been like three months since my last video, and I'm starting to feel a little bit like Andrew Kramer. So, I thought I'd throw out another tutorial. And this time, I'm gonna cover Dynamesh. Now, Dynamesh is the other really popular way to get stuff done in ZBrush. And I'm there's a lot of ins and outs. There's, there's a couple of traps. There's a couple of tricks. Uh, you, you know, there's, there's a lot of documentation out there, but I'm just going to give you a rundown from my perspective on how to use this thing and how to avoid some of the pitfalls that you may run into. So without further ado, I give you the complete idiot's guide to ZBrush Dynamesh edition. So just to let you know how I'm going to break this down, uh, again, I'm going to let you know what version of ZBrush I'm working on. I'm currently working on ZBrush 4 R7, again, just like the last tutorial. And I'm going to fire this thing up from scratch and walk you through how to access it and everything. And also, additionally, I'm going to break this thing down into questions because I find one of the best ways to learn is ask a question, get an answer. Run into a roadblock, ask a question, get an answer. All right, so here we go. Here we go, straight up. And here comes the light box. Now, right here, you're going to see these options right here are Dynameshes, these guys. And they have because sort of like presets going on them you can easily click on one of these things but I don't want to do that what I do want to do is I want to take an object and turn it into a Dynamesh you can take anything and turn it into a Dynamesh in this program so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on this I'm gonna to go to this 3d sphere I'm gonna drag this sphere out I'm gonna hit edit and here we go now I have a sphere now the first thing you're gonna notice is that the toolbars over here are a little bit different especially under geometry like I can divide this thing but the normal stuff is kind of missing uh, what it should look like just for comparison's sake is this right here so you're missing stuff like array mesh nano mesh blah 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 so you can see that there are way more options uh, once you convert this thing so now I'm, now I've got my sphere I'm missing all the options the first thing you want to do is hit make you want to hit this button make poly mesh 3d those are going to give you all those options so now we're all good now you can go under geometry and you can come down to Dynamesh, and here's your Dynamesh. Now, all you have to do is click this button, but a few things to take note of first off. First off, I would take this blur, because it blurs the feature of your object, and I would change this to zero, and just leave it there. Okay, You're, this is not going to get complicated. And right here is your resolution, and I'm going to get to this in a second because it's a little bit complicated, but this resolution determines, of course, how detailed your Dynamesh is. It can get a little tricky and it's really dependent on your hardware. So if you're running a really, really weak computer as opposed to a beefy machine, you know, you're going to want to keep your resolution really efficient. You're not going to want to just jack this thing all the way to like 5,000 and then call it a day because there's a high chance that your computer is going to crash. Now, my computer is really, really powerful, so I can probably take mine to like 2,000 before it starts going really slow. I'm going to put this thing at 200 and then I'm going to hit Dynamesh. Now, the object has already changed. You can turn my symmetry back on, and here we go. This is Dynamesh. Now, it doesn't look like anything really changed, but here is the magic. When you're working with a Dynamesh, and say you want to make horns, all right? This is going to be a demon face, and you want to put horns on this guy. And normally what you're going to do is you're probably going to use the move tool, maybe, bring this out like this so immediately what you've already started to notice is that in here your polygons are all stretched out and weird as opposed to here they're all uniform and even and you can't really sculpt on this if you start trying to sculpt on this it's going to do shit like this right it's going to go crazy on you it's not going to give you what you want but what dynamesh does is if you hold control and drag anywhere and let go it will now restructure the polygons in this object to be mo much more efficient. So now when you come back here and you start sculpting, you'll see now they're perfect. That's what Dynamesh does. You can drag stuff out. Again, check it. Oh my God, it's going crazy. Hold control, click, drag, let go. And now it's already adapted. Perfect. So this is kind of the beauty of Dynamesh, right? So that's pretty much what Dynamesh is. You can conceptually sculpt out an entire character this way. 
Now, when we get back to the resolution, remember? So as we create new pieces and refine them and continue to refine them, what's gonna happen is this resolution you're gonna find isn't gonna be high enough. So if I start using stuff like the snake hook tool and grab this guy, and this sucker can go crazy. So I can get like, whoa, and you'll say, oh my God, there's not nearly enough polygons here. And if I use my Dynamesh, you're gonna find that it does not fix this at all because that's too extreme. Like you're going way too far uh, for it to understand. Now, if I drag this out and Dynamesh and then grab the end and then drag that out and Dynamesh, you can see that it gives you something a lot more efficient. But again, you don't wanna go crazy. You want to do it in tiny increments. You want to just build up and build up and build up and build up. So the first question that I tend to get is, uh, how do you go back, right? So like I've, I've drawn horns and I go, man, like one too many horns, right? Uh, how do I get rid of this horn after I've already created it? Like you wouldn't be able to like smooth it down. It's going to do weird shit. So here's a quick way to do it. You can just line up in any efficient manner. If you hold control and then hold shift, you get a mask like this, turns green. And you can mask this object all the way down to its root. Click that. So then you can hold control and then hold shift again. And if you click on the object you have, not over here, just click on this object, it's gonna invert your selection. So now you've got a hole in your head. The object is still there. If you hold control and shift and click anywhere, it's gonna come back. So this is, this is how you get rid of this. So you hold control, hold shift, drag it, mask it, hold control, hold, con hold shift, click the object, invert it. Now we have a hole and if you come down to modify topology right here, click it, you can hit delete hidden. So once you hit delete hidden, that object is gonna be gone and that hole is gonna be there in his head. So delete hidden. And then all you have to do is come right over here and hit close holes, bam. Now, now that it's gone, you can re-dynamesh and it's gone forever. So if you start clicking around, hold control, hold can shift, click around, it's gone forever. You just smooth that bad boy down, right? And you can see here that it even adapted the grid look of, uh, of the original sphere. And I can just smooth that out so it's not a big deal. So that's how you add geometry, refine it, and then subsequently gain the ability to remove it. Now I could have gotten that a little bit closer to the base and removed it a little bit more efficiently, but this is a tutorial, forgive me if it's not perfect. So this applies to almost anything. So you can't, so here's another thing too, like you can't do something really complicated like if you do a square down the middle of his head and then invert it. If I try to close this hole, it's not gonna it's not gonna close it like it took a chunk out of it like you booleaned right if I hit delete hidden and then close holes it's gonna do that right so you redynamesh bam smooth it out <laughs> but this is how you get to playing with it right like um, you just kind of continue to cut and remove and subtract and remove and subtract and cut and move or subtract and cut and pull out and eventually what's going to happen is if i were to go to a move and let's just get crazy with this thing right like i'm gonna pull out some crazy legs crazy legs redynamish and then pull out some of this jazz it's not going to make any sense don't worry i'm not trying to make a character redynamish And it's all going to be looking pretty good, right? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but say I want to connect this right here and leave a hole right here. So which leads you to another question of, I want to tube objects around. Like I want to just pull a piece out of here, put it in here. So what you have to do is you have to mask this area. And then what you're going to do is you're going to grab your move and you're going to grab this guy and you're going to pull them all the way into that and then let go. Now, when you, undo your mask and then redynamesh it blended it together see that pretty crazy huh and again if you want to get rid of this you just have to select it like this invert it 
look at that. Modify topology, delete hidden, close holes, fixed. Right? I know, this is looking like a mess. I'm not trying to make a character again, trust me. I'm just trying to show you potential pitfalls. So the next question is, how do I bring in an object and attach it to my Dynamesh? I want to like bring in a cylinder or a sphere, or maybe you have a really cool piece of an arm that you modeled on a different character and you want to attach that arm to this character, whatever. All you have to do is import your object. So you can come here and we're going to go to my desktop. I'm looking at a bunch of crap. I'm going to import a man right here. All right, it's the same dude from the last tutorial. Come down to your weird object, hit append to add the object to your scene. Append, grab the man, bam, there he is. Oh, a little bitty head poking out. If you wanna be a little bit more better with it, you can use deformation. So you can offset him on the Y. So bring him up, up to his waist. So now we got a man. So we want to blend him into my Dynamesh. And we're going to see what this does because the man's got a little bit more finer detail than this big blobby mesh does. So you're going to come to here. You're going to grab your object. You're going to go to merge. Merge down. Hit OK. And then re Dynamesh. There you go. Now, this is an important tip because what you're going to notice is the man's features got all fucked up. So when I undo, you can see that the man has like really nice stuff. He's got eyes, he's got really good detail, his flow is all really good, everything works, but the second I Dynamesh, he's all fucked up again. So that's how you lose detail using Dynamesh. It did successfully blend him into the base, but it killed all of his features. And this is where you things start to get risky with Dynamesh. Dynamesh is more of a concepting tool, and this is important. Dynamesh is not used to take a model from concept to completion. One, its poly flow is all completely jacked up because it doesn't really care. Ultimately, you're going to have to retop this thing and then reproject your details down. This is just for concepting ideas really quickly. And the reason why his face got all fucked up is because inside my Dynamesh, my resolution is only 200. Now, if I take this and I jack it up to 1,000, like that, and then I come into here and I re Dynamesh. Oof, still not enough. Still not enough detail. And that's where it gets dangerous. The higher this number goes up, the more your stuff has a chance to screw up. Now, if I were to scale up this guy's features and make him more dominant instead of super tiny, it may save his features, but you can see this happen all, kind, all over the place. I'm just gonna connect that. And then here, and then you can see, oh my God, he's part of the thing now. And ultimately what I would have to do is you, well, ultimately what you can do is you can divide uh, the subdivision. You can divide and divide your Dynamesh, right? And then I can come into here and start to add all kinds of details back in and like put his eyeballs back and whatever a mouth. Haha, -ha, mustache, twirly. Sure, right? But you're going to notice that the second I re Dynamesh, again, boop, right back to where we started. So, this, and look at his hands now, his hands are completely jacked up. So, this is where Dynamesh gets a little bit risky, right? Like, I can continue to jack this up, say 5,000. We'll see if it crashes. That'd be interesting. That only goes to 4,000 something. I'll undo. I'll take this to 5 thousand which you should never ever do ever read dynamesh and you can see here oh my god it's freezing up and now it's taking its sweet ass time with this bar and this is why you don't go this high now my computer can probably process this but most computers can't it it's really really intense on your machine and you run a high risk high high risk of your shit crashing uh it, it becomes really really risky Oh, look at that. So it did finish, and look at that. It saved the details on his face because my resolution is so high. But do not do that. I would suggest never letting this guy get over 500, to be truthful. Like, keep it at 500, 
don't worry about it. Don't worry about making details this sharp. You're going to notice in a lot of other tutorials that you see online, and this is undoing a lot of polygons, which is why it's taking this time. You're going to see in other tutorials when they do them online, they start sculpting out really, really detailed features. And then the second they dynamesh it to add more polygons to it, all those features wipe away. And I'm going to show you an example of that as soon as this thing gets done processing. So here in the light box, I'm going to go ahead and grab this earthquake guy that comes, you know, with every version of ZBrush. Double click this guy and open him up. And I'm going to show you some of the shit that you should not and never ever do. Now this guy is pretty good. Now I'm, I'm going to isolate everything but his body right here. And he's got nice quality textures. He's got some vein stuff, some subsurface, got some good skin detail. And he's pretty, pretty good. He's pretty good. Anyway, you're going to see what Dynamesh is going to do to this guy, right, after I do this. So I'm going to take this, change it to 300, hit enter, change the blur, set it to zero, enter, click off, Dynamesh. And look at what it did to him. Now his textures are fucked, his creases are fucked, everything is fucked. So I can undo this, and again, I can raise up my resolution to 1,000. Enter, click off, take the blur, down to zero, enter, Dynamesh again, boop. And you can see right here that with a thousand resolution, his details are a lot more preserved, but it still fucked them all up. Like he's, he's a shell of what he was. So this is like when you really, this is one of the main reasons and why I continue to preach on why you should only use this for concepting. You use it for concepting all the way till you have your complete silhouette your complete shapes down, everything is in good shape, and then from that point on, you're gonna wanna collapse this thing down, Z remesh it, uh, and then start using the normal subdivide that I taught you in the previous tutorial. Dy Dynamesh is, is really great. You can do a lot of really cool stuff with it. You can make interesting shapes. It's, it's in a lot of ways, it's really good to use this in conjunction with other stuff. So if you were to take something with the Z spheres and concept out entire big characters like silhouette then you convert it to dynamesh add a bunch of resolution and then add in uh, basic blocky shapes like really fill out the silhouette collapse that down and then start adding subdivision to it that is the normal workflow that i would approach that that most people uh, use of course like it's all dependent on hardware and you'll see some people like just sculpt out with dynamesh this incredible fucking gigantic dragon and it's fucking amazing and everything but again you don't know what they're working on so this is kind of like how i'm going to teach it. this is more of the approach that i suggest um going back to you know just a normal dynamesh say changes no come back into here again just to let you know what's going on under the hood if i turn on polyframe here and i bring my fucking thing over and then grab this and like move this out. This is a much better example of what the poly count's doing. And then you read, ooh, Dynamesh, classic.